In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph piecewise functions. So what does that mean, piecewise functions? How do we graph them? And I'm going to show you two easy methods. So if you don't like one, you can use the other method. So let's dive in. We're going to do three examples. Uh, see if you can pause the video and do some of these on your own if you want some practice. But the first example, we have f of x equals x plus 4 when x is less than or equal to 0 and f of x equals 2 when x is greater than 0. So let me show you the first method, which I call the graph and erase method. So the graph and erase method, f of x is like y. So we're graphing the line y equals x plus 4. OK, x plus 4, this is just a line with a y-intercept of 4. So it's going to cross right here at 4. And it has a slope of 1. So that means we're going to go rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1, or you can go the other direction, okay? Okay, and you can see we have this line here. Let me just draw a light line. But you see how it says we want the part of the line where x is less than or equal to zero? So that means when you're equal to zero or less than, so meaning to zero or to the left. This part here we don't want. Let's see if we can erase that part right there since we don't need it. So it's just going to be this graph right here. I'm going to draw the arrow. It keeps going to the left. Equals means that we want to use this as a closed circle. It includes that point or less than to the left. Okay, now the second equation, f of x or y equals 2, we know that y equals 2 is a horizontal line. So I could draw a horizontal line like this, but I just want the part where x is greater than 0. So it means it doesn't equal here when x is 0 just when it's greater than or to the right. Now again, I could draw that whole line and erase the part that I don't want. I just want the part that's to the right of zero. Okay, so why do they call it a piecewise function? Well, it passes the vertical line test, meaning for every x value, there's only one y value. And even here, see how this is open and this is closed, it's only crossing once, and it's in pieces. You're on this graph until you get to zero, and then you jump down to here and you're on this graph. Now, what's method number two? Method number two I call the table method because we're going to make two tables. We're going to make a table when x is less than or equal to zero. So maybe we'll pick some numbers like zero, negative one, negative two. And then for the second graph, we're going to pick values that where x is greater than zero. Now, greater than zero, I would still include zero. Okay, zero, one, two, three. But at this point, since it's greater than zero, we're going to draw an open circle. And that's what we did right here, see? So let's go ahead and do that. So I put zero in, I get four. If I put negative one in, I get three. If I put negative two in, I get two. And you can see I'm plotting zero, four, negative one, three, negative two, two. And you can see I can draw a line and I'm going just to the left since it's less than. Over here, this is going to be 2, 2, 2, 2. See, x is always equal to 2. And you can see when I'm plotting these points, I'm getting a horizontal line, but I just want the line where it's greater than but not equal to 0. So that's the table method. Let's go to number 2 now. So for number 2, we have y equals 1 half x plus 2 when x is less than negative 2. So this is a line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1 half. So rise 1 run two, rise one, run two, or you can go the other way, down one, over two, down one, over two, down one, over two. But notice we want the part where x is less than negative two. So I could draw this line, but I really only want the part where it's less than but not equal to negative two. So this is going to be open, and less than means to the left. So the rest of this here we're going to erase, okay, since we don't need that. Okay, graph and erase method. The second uh, equation here, we have y equals the square root of x plus 2. Now, you're probably familiar with uh, square root graphs. They basically look like, like this. But what's happening is this plus 2 is shifting the graph left 2. So what would happen is right here is where the graph would start. And when, let's see, when x is, um, let's just say x is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. When x is 2... 2 plus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, and you can see this graph is curving like that. It's still a function, it passes that vertical line test, see closed here, open here, and we just did the graph and erase method. Now, you can use the table method. Again, what I would do is I would pick points like less than negative 2. Now, I would include negative 2, 
negative 4, negative 6. But at negative 2, when I put this in, let's see, that's negative 1 plus 2 is 1. But at negative 2, 1, I'm making an, an open circle because it's less than but not equal to. Right? So you want to include this number, even though it's not equal to, just make it open and pick some numbers that are less. So if I do negative 4, 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. So let's see, negative 4, 0, that's right here. If I do negative 6, that's negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. That's going to be right here. And you can see this is a line going to the left, since it's less than to the left. Same thing here with this one. We can make a table. I'd start with negative 2, since it's greater than or equal to negative 2. And let's pick some other numbers, negative 1. You could pick, uh, let's say, uh, 2 would be a good one. And maybe, like, uh, what's another one? Maybe 7. So if we put those numbers in, we're going to get 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then notice that negative 2, that's equal to negative 2, so we're going to make this a closed circle, and you get your graph. So sometimes you know it's just an easy graph. You might want to just graph and erase the part you don't want. Sometimes it's an equation you're not as familiar with, and you might want to use the table method. Let's look at one more example. Okay, why don't you give number 3 a try on your own? But before you do that, I just want to mention that there's... Uh, three unique ways that you can help support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. Uh, one is that I've got two video courses for sale. Links are in the description, Algebra 1, Algebra 2. Uh, really great courses. I put a lot of time and energy in walking you through a typical Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash college algebra class. The other method is you can join the channel as a supporting member and you can, uh, for a few dollars a month, um, uh, make a donation to the channel and it helps support the uh, videos that I'm putting up here. And I see everyone's uh, name and uh, channel and handle that comes through that's a supporter and I really appreciate that. And the third way is if you're interested, I've got a Teespring store and the links in the description. I have also some uh, t-shirts below this video. So if you're interested in purchasing one of my math t-shirts, that's another great way to help uh, support the work that I'm doing here uh, for you on YouTube. So. Let's dive into this last example, number three. What would you do on this one? Well, you remember, we've got the graph and the erase method. We've got the table method. Or we could even do a hybrid where we do one of, one of each, right? And I think that's what I'm going to do here because I've got uh, y equals x plus 2. I know that's a line with a y-intercept of 2, right? So I could put a point right here. And I know this has a slope of 1, which means I'm going to go rise 1, run 1 rise 1, run 1, okay, or I can go the other direction. So I can see that this is a line, but I only want where x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So here's negative 1 here. Equal to negative 1 or greater than means you're going to the right because x values are getting greater. So that's that part there. And now for the second one here, I know that this is a parabola that's opening down. The 2 is stretching it, the negative makes it reflect, and the plus 1 shifts it up 1. So I know it looks something like that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a table. I'm going to pick some values that are negative 1 or less. Okay, so plot a few of these. So if I put negative 1 in, I get 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. Now, negative 1, negative 1, this point, see how it says less than negative 1 but not including negative 1? So that means over here at negative 1, a negative 1, this has to be an open circle. Let's do negative 2. So negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So let's see, negative 2, negative 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's right about here. And again, like I said, we knew, we knew it was a parabola opening down. So this graph is going to basically look like this. If we drew the whole thing, it would more look, look more like that. Notice it's still a function, passes that vertical line test, it's just in pieces, and you got it. So great job if you're able to get that one. If you want to see more examples and you want to get some more practice graphing piecewise functions, follow me over to this previous video that I did on piecewise functions right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.